How are we doing there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV and some of you this will be welcome back because I know that you tune in at this time of year for my daily roundup of Q School. I'm also going to make an announcement at the start of this video that I am now going to be doing these sort of daily roundups for the Pro Tour events, picking out all the stories, performers and all those sort of changes and things. So most of the events throughout the year will also have these sort of coverage on them. So if you do enjoy this coverage, go down below and hit a subscribe button. Now this one's going to be a little bit different, a bit tricky. Day one of Q School, it's all about finding the stories in terms of the players that have turned up in line with the performance because actually nothing can really be lost today. There's not as much jeopardy in there and there's not really much in terms of the moving and the, it's just sort of a shaping day so we'll have a little look through the results and I'll tell you some of the stories because some of these names might be very unfamiliar to you which is why again this is sort of a good sort of way to look through I mean we've got some surprises Connor Heenahan someone who does very well at the Moda Super Series a couple of nine darters on that stage going out in the opening round with just a 79 average and that's what Q School can do you've got to be on it for these three days or else your two years, your season is pretty much done for. Reese Griffiths knows how to bring his performance. 104 average in the opening game. We'll see if he can keep that going throughout the day. James Richardson, someone we've seen at Lakeside, someone we've seen on the World Championship stage. He beat Van Barneveld in an almighty classic. 3 0, one of the biggest upsets on the World Championship stage. He's through. Chaz Barstow looking to get back to that form when he gave Michael Van Gerwen a bit of a scare at the World Championship. Aidan Kirk beat Phil Taylor at the UK Open many years ago, but 90 average, showing that he's coming back to a little bit of form. Darren Beveridge, nicknamed Ice Cold, someone that we was really looking forward to seeing on this channel moving forward, but he's through. Nice, had a little break, coming back well. You always get a few of these at Q School. I was asked in my comments section before, do you get any players who sort of average low? And I said, you'll probably get some in the 50s. We've got one in the 30s. Um, Gary Blades, former tour card holder, beating him. It gets quite tricky to play when someone's missing as much as that. It does become quite hard to do. Barry Bates just won't give it up, will he? He's a fighter. He is determined and he is doing good stuff. Still out there throwing 81 averages despite all the health issues he's got. Thomas Banks got through. He's a guy that if it wasn't for Luke Littler would probably be drawing a lot more attention on. Someone who did really well at the UK Open. This, Geoff. Geoffrey. That's not Jeff. Jeff is j f f. I just spot Jeff with a G. Geoff. Geoffrey. Heath getting through. Kevin Painter looking to get on the challenge tour looking to play some darts he plays the seniors tour plays the seniors tv events doesn't feel he's getting enough competition at the moment so he's at q school in order to try and just get some more active play because he wants to try and pick up one of those senior titles in the near future scrolling through and what you do you're looking for all those sort of stories and names which they'll sort of come as the tournament deepens in but Tom Lonsdale is certainly one of those he's a guy that came into the Moda Super Series as a complete unknown and ADC qualifier he's gone to Q School 104 average which is quite impressive now when we look forward we're already into round two at the time of recording this video that's the other thing I'm just going to point out quickly to you I record these videos and I record these clips as the tournament is running so it gives you sort of a live feel like a review at the end of the day if you've been unable to follow it I'll talk you through it as long as you're subscribed so back to the drawing board as they say and we're looking through and trying to find those key stories now a couple of these games I was watching throughout the day I was watching games like the Fallon Sherrett game games at this point where you think these players will have a lot of interest and I'm not going to lie I did spend a lot more of my time over on the European because I think that's where a lot of the real key stories are going to come from there are 77 places available here on the UK and I don't think we're going to get too many surprises or players you'd expect to go through not go through this stage. Chaz Barstow, though, someone we've already picked up on, he going out 5-2 to the American Danny Lauby, who a lot of people think it's now his time. He's had a couple of goes at this, but has yet to get over the line. I'm sure that will be in the near future for him. Josh Richardson, someone that I've seen get tipped up a few times. 
to get through Q School. I certainly expect him to get through this phase. He's developing quite nicely. I remember before he was always known as James's son, where now he's sort of carving out his own ways and methods within the sport. Leighton Bennett, someone who was flagged up as being sort of the next big thing. He was one of those players, but was playing up more on the BDOWF side. Lost his way in recent times, but I've noticed he's been picking up a few titles here and there, and he's starting to come back to form, just like Mark McGinney, former tour card holder, and also a player who, when we look at what he's achieved, the runner-up of events such as the World Championship on the BDO side, mismatched darts to beat Glenn Durrant in that World Final. 98 average there over Adam Atkinson, a good player from Newcastle. Another victory for Thomas Banks. The names I'm picking out and talking to you about right now will probably be a lot of the names that we'll be talking about throughout this tournament. They're players that sort of draw the attention. Players will be going through, unless someone does something that really stands out and grabs our attention. Fallon Sherrick beat John Bowles. A few missed opportunities there uh, for John, but Fallon Sherrick is a player I think is going to get it this year for some reason. Geoffrey Heath through again. Ashley Coleman, someone who regularly appears on YouTube with Jack over on his YouTube channel. I'm sure he'll have a lot of support going into this one. Getting through this stage, I think, is something he's going to be more than capable of doing so. And it's a wide open draw, so there is no seedings at this point of the event, which means anything can happen. Shane McGurk, one of my predictions to get through. 5-1 victory for him, the... Winner of a gold event in the WDF over in Ireland. John Part, someone who I think a lot of people are going to be keeping an eye on. Three-time world champion. I believe he's only there again for the games and the seniors possibility, but he's not going to turn down the opportunity to win a tour card. Should that opportunity present itself, got to keep winning in order to do that. America's Alex Spellman, someone who I expect will get a tour card. Very strong player, very keen and passionate dart player, wants to be a professional. Um, used to edit and work on a program called Fortnite, a game you may have heard of here or there. I expect that he's going to be one we're talking about come the back end of Q School. Now we know who everybody's in this event, we're just going to pick out the star performers for this round and they are four players. To be a star performer of the round, to be one of the highlights, you have to average over 95. We've got four players that have done that. Lou Bevan of Wales, a 5-3 victory over Irish Pat Quinn. Justin Hood got his 5-3 victory over former Challenge Tour winner from a couple of years ago, Stu Wilson. Danny Lowby continues his success here, 5-0 victory over Harry Gregory. Jim McEwen. 5-2 victory over Mark McGinney. So we've lost a couple of players there. We've also lost another couple of names as well when we look at players who have gone out. We know mcgeaney has gone out. Geoff, someone we've looked at so far, has gone out. Ash Coleman, Shane McGurk, one of my predictions. And the three-time world champion, John Part, also going out at this stage. Now, points are allocated to people that go out in the latter stages, which makes up that order of merit system. We know there's a lot of players going to be going through it. The players that reach the quarter-final stage are guaranteed to go through it. My tip here, or my thing if I was doing this Q school phase, I'd want to get through early. Day one and two, amass enough points so that you can qualify through, so you don't need to play day three. So you can have that day off before the big four-day push we see a lot of people enforce this or use this system to their advantage or just win through because points are only given out to losers as they say so just win through don't worry about the points that's something i think a lot of people do at q school i get bombarded with messages of people how many points do you need what do you need don't think about points think about winning points are your fallback but Points and fallback for a lot of these players today, giving them a little bit of a boost, going into day two, get enough points, maybe have that third day off, that's what I would be wanting. But who's going to get through? So moving on to the top 64 to see if we can find that answer. And Alex Spellman, who's had a great day so far, going out 5-1. Bit of a surprise there, Stuart Wears, a new name on me. 
So we'll be keeping an eye on him because that's a sizable victory there for him. Lou Bevan following up that good performance. He averaged 96. Sometimes it's hard to follow up a big performance like that because you walk off, you've got all the adrenaline going, and then you need to come back and try and find that performance once again. This is where we've also lost a Fallon. She's gone out 5 2 to Kai Fang Lang, an ex PDC tour card holder, player who played at Lakeside recently as well. So sort of the minimalistic start there for one of my predictions. Lost a few of them already, haven't we, so far? Leighton Bennett, unfortunately, 81.59, going back to that form we've seen him of recent times, but certainly heading back in the right direction again. A couple of big performances here. Danny Lauby, 5-1 victory. He's looking good for Stage 2 already, and with darts like that, it's not just looking good for Stage 2, it's looking good for a tour card. He has been the standout performer of the day by far, which you know what it means. He's probably going to go out in the next round. Aidan Kirk. Mentioned earlier on that he took on Phil Taylor and beat him at the UK Open. Nearly 100 average there, so maybe he is on his way to moving back towards the good stuff once again. At the bottom here, Pete Hudson, former tour card holder. He is also out to Patrick Lansky. I've probably murdered that name. The round of 32 are star performers. They go to Keelan Kay, the lord of the board. Someone who's played on the Development Tour, the Challenge Tour, and regular on the mode of Super Series at 94.313 against Thomas Cromwell. Matty Dennant, the man who missed match darts to stop Glenn Durant from even getting a tour card years ago. He's due one. 5-0 victory for him. 100 average. Justin Hood, a 5-1 victory for him over Chris Wickerden, the man who's probably got one of the greatest beards in darts. Just a lot of the exhibitions with modus and mda and i put scott campbell on here as well for an interesting reason he was actually dominating the game 4-1 up against his opponent bridgewater kieran bridgewater that is and always up in that high 90 average somehow managed to lose that bridgewater averaging 87 so a bit of a surprise i was just waiting for that one to come in so i could make the graphic and he just kept losing leg after leg and couldn't wrap it up Daniel Alby goes through 5-0 over Pete Burgoyne. Burgoyne, who just wired a 9 data earlier on in the day, but the American Lauby continues his big successful run here on day one at Q School. And day one of Q School does come to an end. We know our eight players now that are guaranteed to be taking in that lineup in stage two. Joining the players that was top of the challenge tour, the development tour, and also joining those players that have just lost PDC tour cards looking to get them back. Our first eight players that are guaranteed to get through are Lou Bevan, Harry Lane, Mike Warburton, Adam Hunt, Kieran Bridgewater, Danny Lauby, Denon, and Patrick Lansky. Now, of these, you've got to say, star performer of the day has definitely been Danny Lauby, but Matty Denon putting in some big averages, again up by the 100 on this qualification game. Now, if you are looking at this and thinking, ah, oh, I feel a bit bad for Justin Hood or Jim Mostyn, who got so close and have missed out, don't worry about that. I think they're pretty much through. If you get to the last game here, the last 16, you're pretty much guaranteed your place in the secondary phase. Now, remember, that is the key bit. This is going through to phase two. This does not mean these players today have won their PDC tour card. It means they now have the opportunity to move on to win their PDC tour card. They will be in stage two, the 128 player field that starts on day four of Q School. But before then, we've got two more days of qualification. Eight places on the line, as well as that order of merit. I'll update you on the order of merit system in tomorrow's video as well. I'm going to be looking to go live for a period of this tomorrow as well. So keep your eye out for that. If you want to come on and have a bit of Q School chat along the way, let me know who you're looking out for. Who are the stories that you're looking out for? Who is your favourite? We'll see if we can feature them on the channel as well and follow their story as we look through Q School for all the stories and ultimately all the successes that will be coming. Catch you soon, guys, for some more Edgar TV.